here. I have a file that we're going to work on, and Working Papers allows you to split up accounts on the trial balance. For example, breaking up a client-supplied account into taxable and non-taxable portions, or perhaps current and non-current portions, or opening additions and disposals, as well as other options that you may find within your needs in your engagement files. This allows for better granular control of account data throughout the entire engagement. To be notified when a split up account is unbalanced, we select the appropriate option in the options dialog by selecting tools, options, and advanced. The split up options available uh, will allow us to display unbalanced message for current year, display unbalanced message for prior year, or display unbalanced message for budget. If selected, there will be a check mark beside the item. And the user will get a warning message when he tries to quit the split up function while there is a non-zero difference between the account setup balance and the split up total for each of the current period, prior period, or budget amounts as applicable. The checkbox for each type of balance must be selected independently. This warning allows the user to reconcile the differences before returning to the account setup. We can also allow deletion of split up accounts with balances. If selected subaccounts formed by a split up can be deleted even when they have balances. Working papers will revert to the total balance in the file. Now I'm going to select this item in case I need to delete a split up uh, with a balance later and I'll click OK to save my options. On the working trial balance, which we can access through the trial balance button on the navigation toolbar, we can click either the three dotted button or the plus sign next to the account number and the split up dialog opens. So I'm going to click the plus sign beside account 142. Split up accounts can have their own period balances. As you can see at the top here, I'm in a quarterly file and I can cycle through the quarters. And for each split up account you create, we specify the period date sequence such as yearly, monthly, or quarterly from the drop down menu. Under account number, we can enter the account number for the split up. Typically, it takes on the original account number with a subcode 01020304 and the separator of the decimal. So if the account split up is 142, we could use 142.01 as the account number for the first split up. We also need to enter a descriptive name for the split up account and enter the remaining information for the split up as well. This includes whether the account is locked, uh, if there's a map number or lead sheet associated with it, and then our balances, preliminary adjustments, final for the current year, and then for the four prior years as well. Budget information can also be put in here as can forecast information. Now, the easiest way to add a new split up account is to select the next available line and press the tab key. That's going to give you the next account number and duplicate the name that was provided on the previous row. The net balances will also be applied to ensure that the totals of the split ups match the main account balance. Now, I didn't really need that 142.05, so I'm going to delete that row and it will remove it for me. Before exiting the split up accounts dialog, you want to ensure that the combined balances of the split up total the original balance of the account, if any. So, we're looking at the top row and we want to make sure that the bottom row matches that number and in this situation you can see that it does. I'm going to click close here. As a result I get a plus sign beside account 142 indicating that there are split ups associated with it. Now, split up accounts must have the same account properties as the main account. Changing account properties may lead to errors in the amounts displayed through case view linkages. Any change to the parent account will not be reflected on automatic documents until the split up accounts are open, so we would have to come back, open the split ups, and close that once again. In the trial balance, if an account does have the plus sign associated with it, we know that it has assigned split ups. If the split ups become unbalanced, the warning symbol is displayed to the left of the account number, and that's this ye little yellow symbol with the exclamation point. Or, if any changes have been made to the file, such as the deletion of an adjusting entry that affect this account, the red circle with the white X warning symbol displays. To clear the symbols, we enter the split up accounts dialog and review the balances. So if I open that up, 
have a look here, we can see that the way I set this up, it doesn't match the top and bottom balances for all the periods and all of the balances listed. So I would need to either fix that or I can just delete this item so that there's no split up associated with my leasehold improvements and close that. So that removes the plus sign beside leasehold improvements and it does get rid of the warning message. Now with the error message here, that lets me know that something's changed associated with the account. So I absolutely have to go into that item to make sure that my split ups are updated accordingly. The hot key for getting into the split ups rather than clicking on the plus sign is to press the control, shift, and S key together on the keyboard. Now split up accounts have their own period balances as I mentioned. And for each split up account we create using the drop down we choose what period that we want the balance to be associated with. In my example, I have account 142. Now, by the way, this particular example does balance top to bottom and across the page. So I'm going to close this and as a result, the error message goes away. But again, in my example, account 142 has additions of 10,000 in periods 2, 3, and 4 of a quarterly file. So if I go to period 1, first quarter, we can see that I've got all zero balances in the first quarter. Moving to period two, the second quarter, I've got an addition of 10,000 showing in my second quarter for the split at 142.02. And the balance in period two and all other subsequent periods will also be $10,000 unless any amount changes to split up account in the future dates are added. Any amount changes to split up account will affect balances subsequent to that period by adding the difference between the previous and the currently entered balance. In the same example, if you then change period 2 balance to 20,000, all subsequent periods will be 20,000. But period 1 will still be 10,000. If you go back and change period 1's balance to 20,000, then subsequent balances will be 30,000 and so on. The original 20,000 plus 10,000 change in period 1. Now I'm showing you second quarter, which is period 2 addition. If I move to the third quarter, I made a minor change where I put the opening balance from period 2 into the period 3 opening balance. So the additions moved up, I did that manually, and I have another $10,000 in additions in the current quarter. And if I move to the fourth quarter, we can see that I again change that so that I've got the carry forward total from the third quarter in my cost at the beginning of the fourth quarter, plus another 10000 in the additions in that situation. Because split up accounts have the same properties as a parent, when I open a lead sheet, and I'll just go back to the document manager here, for example, lead sheet NN, for an account with split up accounts, the split up accounts appear in place of the main account as we see here. So for my account 260, which is my bank loan account, I have $100,000 in debt. However, with my split ups, I split it up so that I could see the current year, current portion, and the current portion for the next four years, as well as the amount outstanding thereafter. This information can easily then be linked into a note disclosure in the financial statements if necessary.